Coral Island's next big update is just around the corner, bringing tons of new features, story expansions, dynamic game systems, and more. But are you ready for it? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone, and today I will be sharing everything that I think you should do to get ready for Coral Island's next big content update, the Merfolk and Fall update releasing sometime later this month. I'm here to help, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. First on the list is to get yourself ready for the expanded diving experience. With this update, there are two new major diving depths being added to the ocean, the 40 meter and 50 meter zones. And in these areas, the trash is a lot tougher to break with a lower quality scythe. You're going to be clearing a lot of it in the next update, so I would highly recommend upgrading your scythe at the blacksmiths all the way to osmium quality ahead of time. This way, you will be ready to plunge into the ocean and take care of that trash, no problem. A little bonus tip here is to also have some snacks prepared for stamina replenishment, since you might find yourself wanting to keep clearing the trash, but running out of energy. You could save up some of the high stamina foods that NPCs send to you as gifts in the mail. You could also cook up some bug jerky or grilled fish, or if you have extra money on hand, you could purchase Jammu from the tavern in certain seasons, but it also looks like the clinic's shop will be open in the next update, so you could buy it here as well once the update is live. Once you have your upgraded scythe and snacks, you can get yourself prepared for unlocking the Merfolk Kingdom, since I'm guessing many of you will want to visit as soon as you possibly can. To do this, make sure that you have found and activated all 20 solar orbs in the 10 meter depths and all 20 solar orbs in the 20 meter depths. Also, be sure to revisit this spot by the Turtle Cave to activate a previously viewed cutscene with Agung and Denali if you haven't already. This new cutscene will now send you on a quest to upgrading your diving suit, which is essential for entering the Merfolk Kingdom. So that should prepare you for the Merfolk portion of the update, but what about the fall content? Well, if you want to check out all the new fall fashion and experience the spooky festival right away, then you might want to set your game up to be sometime around the fall season. The spooky festival is held on day 28 of fall, but the decorations appear ahead of time around town, so use this information however you would like. Next, I'm actually going to recommend that you focus on your town rank to prepare for the next update. There are lots of new features that will actually be locked behind achieving a certain rank, along with existing features that will now be responsive to the town rank, which previously weren't. For example, the entire selection of clothing won't be available anymore at an F rank. You will instead unlock new styles as you rank up. If you're sitting around a C rank in your town, then you should be able to unlock most of the new features, including the lab upgrades, the fruit trees, pea fowls, and more. However, if you'd like to access the luwaks and llamas in the update, and potentially some other features, you will need a higher rank. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to helping you rank up, which I will link in the description, so you know which activities to focus on. Since I made that video, you are also now able to complete even more bundles at the Lake Temple earlier on, so you should be able to get a C rank with no problem. While getting your rank up is important, I also wouldn't worry too much about getting it any higher than a C right now because you will be able to seriously rank up your town quite quickly with the update. There are going to be 45 new coral sites to heal in the ocean's deeper depths, and you will earn 10 points towards your town rank for each of them. There are also tons more ocean critters that have been added, so you can finally complete the ocean critters bundle at the lake temple and donate one of each to the museum. So you definitely should not struggle with your town rank at all post update. Now, depending on your rank, you may also need to make room for more animals. As I previously stated, it seems like you will need a C rank to unlock the peafowl, but a B rank or higher to unlock unlock the llamas and the luwak. These animals will all require upgraded barns and coops, so make sure you have your farm buildings at level 2, which you can complete by providing the correct money and materials to the carpenters. If you have no more space for new animals, then you have a choice to make. One. You can sell some of your existing animals by interacting with the bulletin board inside of your farm buildings. Two, you can build entirely new farm buildings to house new animals. Or three, you can patiently wait and see if we one day get a third farm building upgrade to allow for more animals per dwelling. It's entirely up to you. 
Further, on the topic of animals, even if you aren't planning to purchase any new ones, you might need to put some measures in place for your existing animals to ensure they are well cared for, because after the update, animals will now be able to get sick. Luckily, the update will also bring plenty of new automation equipment that you can develop at Ling's lab, so I would recommend gathering the necessary supplies ahead of time so you can develop this ranching technology right away. Please keep in mind that this is another area of the game that is town rank dependent, so again, focus on getting that rank up. The temperature machine requires one battery, two flame essences, two water essences, and 50 scrap. The auto feeder requires two batteries, five silver kelp essences, 20 pieces of hay, and 100 pieces of scrap. The auto petter requires five batteries, five gold kelp essences, five large wool, and 100 pieces of scrap. And the auto collector requires five batteries, five osmium kelp essences, 20 pieces of silver ore, and 100 pieces of scrap. So if you want all of the ranching automation equipment, you will need to do the following. Process your trash into scrap. You will need a total of 350 pieces, and the machines process up to 20 at a time, so definitely get to work. You will also want to craft and place solar panels, which are unlocked at diving level 7, to start collecting batteries. You will need a total of 13 for the ranching equipment. You will also need some flame and water essences, which I personally would hold off on trying to collect until the update officially drops. Currently, it is really difficult to obtain a good amount of these items from defeating monsters, but in the current beta, you can actually get the different essences just from breaking rocks, so I wouldn't bother wasting your time battling endless monsters to maybe find just a few essences. For the ranching equipment, you will also need sheep to acquire large wool. As for the gold and osmium kelp essences, you will very easily be able to acquire both of these materials once the update drops, so don't bother purchasing any more gold kelp from the lab and save your money. But do make sure you have a hefty supply of glass on hand as well to bottle the kelp. Finally, hay can be purchased either at the ranch or acquired from cutting grass, and silver ore can be mined from the wind gate. So that should get you all ready for ranching automation. Now, you might also want to set aside the materials for the new sturdy computer if you would like to access online shopping from the comfort of your Coral Island home. Further, if you'd like to say goodbye to Googling, where do I find the rove beetle? Or where can I catch a sea cucumber? Once and for all, and would like access to forecasts for fishing, catching, and forageables, you will also need the materials to develop these components for the computer as well. For the sturdy computer, you will need 10 batteries, 10 silver bars, 20 bronze ore, and 100 pieces of scrap. For the catching component, you will need 5 batteries, 10 osmium ore, 10 gold ore, and 5 wind essences. For the fishing component, you will need 5 batteries, 10 osmium ore, 10 gold ore, and 5 water essences. And for the forage component, you will need another 5 batteries, 10 osmium ore, 10 gold ore, and 5 earth essences. So once again, those solar panels are very important to obtain a total of 25 additional batteries for all 4 items. You will also need to collect different types of ore from the caverns, processing some of it into bars, and again, lots of essences, including wind, water, and earth variants. Outside of these pieces of lab equipment, there is also the auto trash collector, the ultimate scarecrow, and the automation chest. The ultimate scarecrow specifically requires resin, so make sure your pine trees are tapped to collect this resource. If you would like to develop every piece of technology I've mentioned in this video, this is the full list of required materials at the time of posting this video. But please note, it is always possible that it will change for the official update. This list also does not include what you will need for the farm automation equipment for auto fertilizing, seeding, and harvesting, but feel free to take a look here at the requirements and decide if this is something you want on your farm along with the materials you will need. Next, if you want to unlock the architect's desk right away in the update, make sure that you've completed the mining quest line of freeing all four giants. The architect's desk will allow you to design your farm and move objects like farm buildings, trees, crops, and more from a bird's eye view for a small fee, so this could be a very helpful tool to get your hands on. This also means that I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about revamping your farm ahead of the update, especially for things like trees and crops. It will be much more efficient to move these with the desk 
instead of having to destroy and replant them. Do keep in mind that there will be a ton of new fruit trees introduced in this update, which unlike the fruit plants, will not wither off season, so you can have them planted year round, and you might want to have an idea of where you'd like to grow these on your farm. One new item in the update that I would plan ahead for is the brand new shed. This will be a farm building available at the carpenters and will be incredibly useful for storing any artisan machines that are potentially cluttering up your farm. This building will require 200 pieces of wood, 200 stone, and five silver bars, so be sure to have the materials ready and perhaps a spot on your farm cleared out for it. It occupies a nine by eight area, so plan accordingly. I would also recommend completing at least 14 bundles of offerings at the Lake Temple, if you can, so you can unlock the entrance to the Deep Forest, which is planned to be another focus of the next update. At this time, you won't be able to complete the Catch Altar to unlock the dig site itself, but if you have most of it done ahead of the update, then you can go ahead and complete the final bundle of Ocean Critters as soon as the update drops. Finally, if you've done all of this and are still wondering what else you might need to do, I will leave you with two final suggestions. The first is to work on raising your heart level with the Islanders to the current maximum of six hearts. The new update will increase the cap to eight hearts and will bring plenty of new dialogue and heart events. So if you want to experience this stuff right away, you might as well have as many hearts as possible for now. My final suggestion is to make some serious money. There are a ton of things in this update that are going to cost a lot of gold, so if you want it all, make sure your bank account is sitting pretty. And don't worry, I can help with this too. I actually have three videos with money making tips for Coral Island on my channel, and so far they still hold up after all the updates. I will link those down in the description for your reference, and if you follow those tips, you will be set. Well, there you have it friends, that was everything I think you should do to prepare yourself for the next big update for Coral Island with the information we currently have. But let me know down in the comments what you're doing to get ready. Anything and everything, you know I always love hearing from you. Please give the video a like if you are so excited for Coral Island's biggest update to date. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, I love you all, and until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Meredith, or Modus, Tansy, Cisco, Cheese, Divine Raven, Blossom, James, Paul, Jack, Danny, Starry Days, Kimmy, Dream, Becca, Kayla, Haley, and Eisenal, my beautiful Sunstone members. I love you all very much and thank you so, so much for the extra support on the channel, which really helps to make all that I do possible and means the world to me.